May God be with you. Welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church in Plymouth. Whether you are here in person or online, whether you are a long-time member or a first-time visitor, we are all one body in Christ this morning, and you have a place here. We hope that in the gift of this morning, you can all take a breath, reconnect in community, and with God. Today, um, we, wel we welcome the Wilman family, um, Mila and Lacey, for their um, baptism, their parents and their sponsors. And today, we're going to reflect on the gospel text for the fifth week in Lent. And so, as we worship this morning, we're going to continue to hear a clear invitation to return to the presence and the promises of God that are made for us each day, today, tomorrow, and the next day. So again, welcome to wor worship. Please rise as you are able for our call to worship. Jesus weeps for us because we do not know the things that make for peace. The Holy Spirit blows among us prompting us to recognize God among us. The Creator waits with outstretched wings, inviting us to rest in the warmth of her embrace. Let us gather near the divine heartbeat. Let us open our eyes to God and set our feet on the path. The Lenten canticle for today is filled with thy loving kindness. It has three verses which are basically identical except for the pronoun. The first verse uses pronoun I, second verse you, third verse we. I will sing the first verse and ask you to join in on two and three. and we re receive forgiveness. Patient God, we recognize how much we need you for life itself, but how easily we leave your side, O oh God, for a place far away. How blind we are in our darkness, 
how closed our eyes to our sins. Strengthen our spirits, O God. Create our hearts anew, for we cannot make the journey home alone. Guide us to your welcoming arms, to the music and the dancing, for we are easily lost, and only you can find us. Beloved in Christ, when we are lost, all is not lost. God is seeking us, always giving us one more chance, always gathering us into the people of God. Let us rejoice in God's mercy. Amen. Pray, gracious Savior, we welcome your presence among us. Give us hearts of gratitude for your abundant love and forgiveness. Through your spirit, grant us courage to live in trust as your story of grace unfolds within and among us. Amen. The Gospel this morning is from the 12th chapter of John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used it to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord.
in the beginning was the Word. That's how the Gospel of John begins, and from this very first verse, it builds a dramatic telling of Jesus' ministry. And it's full of connections that help us consider once more in this season of Lent, the Mount Olivet theme, today, tomorrow, and the next day, and how they are all linked together. John's Gospel is written with intention, with recurring symbols and ideas recalling history, prophecy, and memory. John even inserts side comments to make sure that we notice all of these connections. And in our reading today, John will provide two themes to help listeners and readers engage with and encounter God in this story of Christ. We are first reminded of abundance, and that theme is most clearly seen, or rather smelled, with a focus on aromas. A pound of perfume, and at the dinner table, too much, Mary, too, too much. It is more than necessary, certainly more than is practical. It is extra. But this abundance and extravagance is a theme of John, a way to remind us of the limitless and eternal God. Think back to the wedding at Cana when Jesus' first miracle is changing gallons and gallons and gallons of water into the finest wine. I used to teach a class to prepare students for the English section of the ACT. One of the key tips is avoid the all or nothing. I advised students that answering, answers that included always and never were not likely to be correct. Jesus, as John shares the story, would not have fared well on the ACT. He loves the extremes. Jesus promises the woman at the well not just a drink, but a spring of water gushing up to eternal life so that she will never be thirsty. And he says the same of bread, whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Walk with me and there will never be darkness. I give my sheep eternal life and they will never perish. Jesus promises abundant grace upon grace, blessing upon blessing. It's certainly an extreme act for Jesus to say to the man who had been dead for four days, Lazarus, come out. So in today's reading at the house of this now living Lazarus and his sisters, we should not be surprised at the pound of perfume and the over-the-top moment of devotion for Mary. It is another way to demonstrate the power and presence of God. So let's go back to the story. Jesus and Lazarus are at the table. Judas and perhaps other disciples are there as well. Martha is preparing the meal. And Mary is pouring perfume at the feet of Jesus, using her hair as a towel to wipe the excess. Make no mistake, this is a very strange moment. How might you respond to this odd, socially unacceptable, uninhibited act on Mary's part? I might avert my eyes and try to not even see this awkward moment. I might be thankful that Judas is bold enough to try to make it stop. John tells us that Judas's motives are not honorable, that Judas is a thief, but still, I think I'd be grateful for his attempt to make it stop. But Jesus commends Mary, describing her actions as the right and honorable thing to do in that moment. He even uplifts what appears to be a reckless and spontaneous overflow of emotion as Mary's intentional, forward-looking preparation. The smell of her gift lingers in her hair and her gratitude permeates the space she's in. This is her way as a child of God to show gratitude, and Christ receives it with love. In the same way, God welcomes whatever ways we express our faith. Maybe we celebrate our faith publicly in enthusiastic worship, in dancing, and singing. 
Maybe we take time for spiritual practices and discussion and study. Perhaps we find God most in our still, quiet moments of prayer and solitude. Or today, we gather in joy and celebration at the baptisms for Mila and Lacey. We are each called and received at the feet of Christ. Alongside this theme of abundance is that of excessive aroma. The perfume nard is related to the same plant as citronella. So think of a large deck or patio candle in liquid form being poured out in the space of a small dining room. Not only does this aroma express Mary's adoration, but science tells us that it creates a memory Beginning in the olfactory bulb at the front of our brains, smells swiftly travel to the hippocampus and amygdala, stamping and imprinting experiences into memory. Memories associated with smell are deeply held, quickly accessed, and strongly linked to our emotions. Some of you probably grew up with incense as part of worship. And any similar smell brings you right back to those places, even if they were years ago and miles away. Everyday smells imprint on us as well. A certain soap or detergent might transport us to childhood, the smell of field corn on a hot August day. The way our best friend's house smelled different from our own. One of my grandfathers was a smoker, And he covered up that smell with chalky white mints that had the X's across the top. The other grandfather was a mechanic, always smelling of the oil and grease that was embedded into his fingernails. I cannot separate those smells from my memories of my grandfathers. This story in John is more powerful because it gets us thinking about aromas. And of course, the smell need not be pleasant to be memorable. Just two chapters before this reading, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Martha warns Jesus that the body will be stinky after four days. And yet, at Jesus' command, Lazarus, come out, there is no mention of the undeniable element of death. Not only does Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, but he defeats even the effects of that death. And that is how this story achieves a higher meaning, a more enduring impact. We can now understand what Jesus means, that Mary's offering is a preparation for his death, a reminder that Jesus will not always be among them in bodily form. This meal from today's reading takes place six days before Jesus will enter Jerusalem for the Passover. And today's story will be echoed on Monday, Thursday, with Jesus washing the feet of his disciples in an act of both humility and honor. On Easter Sunday, we will experience an abundance of aromas as the lilies will fill this space. We are called to be immersed and to participate Like Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, we are the aroma of Christ. To the one, a fragrance from death to death, to the other, a fragrance from life to life. In these coming days, let us walk with Jesus to Jerusalem through our scripture and worship. Let our hearts be filled with the fragrance of abundance, compelled to devotion and discipleship and guided by Christ to step into resurrection life. Amen. Good morning. The hymn we're about to sing was composed by two uh, popular musicians in the ELCA, One, uh, Susan Sherwin, who just passed away, the lyrics, and then the tune was written by Anne Krentz Organ. 
Um, this hymn was written in celebration of the 25th anniversary of the ordination of women in the ELCA and is, has been released in a new hymnal given to the ELCA, which just came out in 2020, um, right at the beginning of March. I feel like there was something else going on, so we missed it. So um, we're so excited to sing this hymn together this morning. We invite you to stand. Right, just the low voices. peace and our offerings this morning. There are many ways to give at Mount Olivet. Your offering may be placed in the basket in front or at the Welcome Center. Online donations may be made via Facebook, and as always, children are welcome to place their offerings in the basket for world hunger. Now, the peace of God be with you. Please share and receive a sign of God's peace with those around you.
choir, that was truly an offering. We pray over all that we have given. God of the wilderness, we give you these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide for our needs. We give you these offerings in hope, knowing you can use them to spread your love in this world. With these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and open hands. Amen. As Pastor Kristen said, it's with joy that we welcome Mila and Lacey. Parents and godparents, uh, we have a whole crew today to come around the font. Um, and just a reminder for all of us here and online, baptism isn't something that's only done to the one being baptized. It's a reminder of what God is doing in our lives, and we're brought back into our, our, our baptisms ourselves. So know today that you are not spectators, you're full participants, and uh, you promise uh, to be with these young girls in their lives to know and celebrate their call as their parents nurture them in faith. So come on up, family around the font here. Everything that you will need will be on the screen if you are online and here at church in the bulletin for your responses and online as well. Let me hold those for you. So I'm going to have you. Mila. Mila, you're going to you guys can gather around so everyone online can get a good look at you as well. There you go. God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. By water and the word, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Parents and sponsors, do you present Mila and Lacey to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? If so, answer, we do. Parents and sponsors, do you promise to help Mila and Lacey grow in Christian faith in life? If so, answer, we will. Congregation, will you be active partners in Mila and Lacey's faith development? If so, answer, we will. We will. All who are gathered, let us reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? We, we renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? We renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? We, we renounce, renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? We, we believe in God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? We, we believe, believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, Son our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We're all about the beautiful chaos. Don't worry about that. Are you ready, Mila? All right. Mila, Jane, Wilman, surrounded by those who love and support you, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mila, child of God, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Lacey. Lacey Lee Willman, you are surrounded by those who love and support you, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lacey, you are a child of God. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Godparents, here is a baptismal candle for Mila and for Lacey, um, a smaller version of the Christ candle, which signifies um, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So you may light those candles in your amazing vocation to walk with these girls in their life of faith and life. And as you light those friends in Christ, this light signifies that Jesus will light Mila and Lacey's way and enlighten their hearts. I invite you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, with the waters, the waters of, of this, this baptism, baptism and the, the commitment, commitment of all who are gathered, guide the journey that has begun at this font. Strengthen families to nurture faith and empower this community to know and celebrate Mila and Lacey's call in this world. We're first going to welcome Mila and Lacey with words and then uh, welcome them with applause. We welcome you into the body of Christ as we respond to God's call to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome Lacey and Lena. God's family, but our community here at Mount Olivet. And um, when we speak promises here, we mean them and that is to know and celebrate their call in the world. So as parents and church together, we do that work together and we come bearing gifts, um, blankets to symbolize that they are wrapped in God's love, but also the love and commitment of this community as they make their journey in life. And uh, what an honor for us to show up in their lives in many ways as they grow. So uh, what we like to do now with those candles lit is sing this little light of mine. And if you would be willing to walk the girls around so we could get a closer look as we serenade them. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it Jesus gave it to me. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, 
You may be seated, Marley. You've got good work ahead as older sister, surrounded by great cousins. So nice to be with your family and your extended family today. So here at Mount Olivet, uh, we end our service in prayer after we have been forgiven and uh, received the means by which God gives his grace through Holy Communion and baptism. Um, we come together in community, and I'm just looking around at a very full sanctuary, and for those who are online, how much we need people in this world. And um, I loved in that hymn where we sang, there's no act of love that is ever wasted. And so for this story to be included in this narrative of Jesus' death, this like abundant, fragrant act of love, that is actually part of this life and part of death as well. And so today, for the places and the people whom you pray for, uh, maybe their abundant act of love be found there as well. So um, I will start us off, and then um, if you are online, you can type your prayers in the comments, and uh, we will pray with you. And if you're here at church, just simply raise your hand, and I will come close and speak your prayer. So let's pray. Uh, good and gracious God, today um, for a story that continues for us to hear it differently um, in these days as uh, we continue to emerge uh, from all that we've went through over these uh, last years uh, for war in the world, uh, for peace, uh, for signs of love, for how this um, gospel message just nestles in our hearts individually for all that we're holding with our families and for us, for bodies, mind, and spirit, God, um, that you chose today, um, Mila and uh, Lacey, to receive your promise for their lives as they grow, for their dear parents and godparents, for all these things, God. Come close now as we speak our prayers. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? Yeah, Tammy. So uh, Tammy's praying for Aunt Sheila, who would have been 80 yesterday, anniversaries of the heart, um, to remember with love her life in this world and now in heaven. Um, and for as you remember, Tammy, we join you in that. Uh, sometimes the rest of the world goes well on its way, and we uh, go back and remember for Sherry's message that smells and moments and senses bring us back. And so for all the ways that you are brought back today to Aunt Sheila, God, in your mercy. Yeah, Diane. Yeah, indeed. Um, happy trails to Wes. <laughs> Um, wow, uh, take the Appalachian Trail for five months, uh, a hope and a dream for Wes, Diane's um, son-in-law, for health and safety, uh, for Wes uh, to see this face of God um, in a midst of a step-by-step -step journey uh, without convenience, but in the midst of nature, um, for all the things, uh, for Laura as well, um, in her time away, uh, God come close, God in your mercy. Yeah, Don. Yeah. Ongoing prayer, uh, God, for Ukraine, Afghanistan, and Yemen, uh, especially for women and children, vulnerable um, in those places. Uh, God, turn us from inward to outward for care and compassion for humanity and the needs, for all the ways that we've been called uh, financial gifts, ongoing prayers, um, just all these stories of this community connected to other parts in the world and how people are showing up in the midst of that to offer these extravagant gifts of love. Um, God, may that tilt this world uh, to be about your vision and peace. God, in your mercy. John. Yeah, praying for John's brother who's home from the hospital um, an extended time that should have been shorter 
Um, John, I think sometimes that's so hard as you have your expectations of how it's going to go and then it goes different. So for patience and strength for his ongoing recovery and for health, as you speak that prayer for your brother, God in your mercy. Mark. Indeed. Um, this is Mark Wadman, and he prays every time for baptisms, and he gets it right, Mark. You promised, and you're making it so. So Mark is praying for Mila and Lena. Uh, he knows this journey of faith is never a straight line, and for them to be brought back again and again, that they have a community of faith, that their gifts are meant to be shared with us and us uh, with theirs. Um, so Mark, thank you for that. May it be so. God, in your mercy. Christy. Oh, yeah, so beautiful. Um, Angela and choir, Christy, uh, a prayer of thanksgiving, it truly always, uh, you seem wider today, uh, deeper, um, all of you contributing your voice to this collected gift. And I think there's a reason you sing as the offering, because it truly was an offering for Christy's ears that can receive that and give thanks to God for you, Angela, for your leadership. Uh, Blake is here. First official day, Blake, as our new organist, and we're so deeply, yay, so deeply grateful. Blake and his wife, um, Abby, uh, to join the fold of our, our congregation in our community uh, for the music you have made and will continue uh, to make is truly a gift. Uh, God, in your mercy. Uh, what's her name? Bianca. Uh, God, we're praying for Bianca today, uh, two years old, waiting for a heart transplant. Um, uh, sometimes words um, can't go to the places that we need to go um, for the tenderness and the fragility of this situation, for this young life, for this promise of her life ahead, and uh, for the limits of our body, and yet for the resilience of science, God, uh, for people called in that moment uh, for stories to connect, oftentimes uh, for the ending of one and the beginning of the other. And in all of this, God, and in the unknown and the waiting, uh, we pray uh, that that makes a difference, the gift of this community to speak that. Uh, please extend that to Bianca and her family, that our community joins you in that prayer. Uh, God, in your mercy. Yeah, Miriam. I'm going to come a little bit closer so I can hear you better. Your Aunt Bethany. Okay. Uh, Miriam is uh, praying for her Aunt Bethany. Uh, I believe that's a prayer to give thanks for her life. Uh, Miriam, um, what a beautiful name. We hear, heard that in our gospel today, the city of Bethany. Um, I don't know your Aunt Bethany, but I know you, Miriam, and I can just imagine uh, the love of her life and for your voice now to speak her prayer in this world and in heaven, we trust God in your mercy. Uh, dear friends online, I'm coming to you. Hi, Joanne. I'm praying for a safe, trouble-free trip back to Minnesota this week. Joanne, you bring that desert sun with you. Uh, we are praying for the same to welcome you back into our fold here in Minnesota. Um, and so for that safe travel as you journey back here. God, in your mercy. Uh, God, for all the things that we have prayed for today, um, for prayers that keep coming, those places and people who so need your love, call us to, to be bearers of that same love. Amen.
Uh, so grateful for this time of worship. Um, as you heard in the gospel reading, uh, we are so very close to Holy Week. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and then from there, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and Easter. And I have to say, um, it has been a long time since I've been able to tell you uh, that we will have in-person worship um, in a, um, a very embodied way for Holy Week, and we're looking forward to that, and also to be able to have that online. Uh, so next Sunday, uh, regular services at 9 and 1045, and uh, you can look in the This Week, which you, you will find out for times for Monday, Thursday, and for Good Friday. Easter, we do have a 6.30 um, a.m. in our historic chapel across the street, which we love. Uh, we are requesting that you make a reservation. Um, I have a feeling that that will be well attended, and we just want to make sure that we can fit everybody into that place that we can um, and welcome you there. So uh, we look forward to that as well. I do have one announcement, and that is, as Sherry talked about on Easter morning, we have uh, flowers around as a sign of resurrection and new growth that you may purchase um, in honor or memory, or if you want to give that for uh, something that has happened in your life, uh, you are welcome to do that. Joy needs those today uh, because she will get those ordered. And then after the Easter service, the last Easter service at 1045, you're welcome to come to church to pick those up, uh, to bring those to a celebration or a special person in your life. So if you have questions, let us know. You can do that online or you can pick those up in the back as well. And then um, during, uh, between services, uh, we've been reading children's books that uh, connect us to our community partner, especially around food insecurities. It's amazing uh, what authors to young people can illustrate and speak in simple words. And Beth Magoo King, who is our faith community uh, manager, is going to lead that. So if that's of interest to you, I always love to be wherever Beth Magoo King is. So join us in the fireside room for that. And then um, for those who uh, may not know, uh, Sherry Larson is our pastoral intern. She's getting ready to graduate from Luther Seminary in June. And we um, have this abundant gift to be able to share her leadership between Mount Olivet here in Plymouth and Spirit of Joy in Buffalo. And so we're always so grateful, Sherry, when you're a part of worship, because you're in a lot of places these days. And um, for Kevin, her husband, and welcome Kristen and Elliot. Uh, Sherry's sister and nephew who are here to hear her preach. Um, it's good to have you among us as well. So I invite you to stand as you are able and we close together and sing.
May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be whole. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Author of life. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.